Less expensive food with fewer chemicals. That's what I'm trying to do with this thing that you see here. You see, image classification identifies weeds in the field and then uses this little sprayer down here to only spray those weeds. That means that fewer chemicals are used while maintaining yields. Automated battery swaps and recharge, as well as flight plan updates, mean that a farmer doesn't have to stand in the field and work on this thing. It runs on its own, which saves labor. So farmers save time, and they save money on pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Consumers get a benefit because there's a lot fewer chemicals going into their food. I guess the only folks who are going to be disappointed about this are Bayer stockholders. First, a summary of how this works, then after the break, I'll show you how it's built. The drone gets a set of waypoints and takes off to execute that flight plan. It flies low about two meters off the ground here uh, using LiDAR to maintain that height. The onboard camera and computer snap images of the ground passing below and whenever it sees a weed, in this case an invasive wild blackberry plant, taking over this prairie grass field, it turns on a small sprayer, dousing the blackberry plants in chemicals. That's a big cost savings. Chemicals are only sprayed when needed. The drone uses GPS RTK with base station corrections to follow the flight plan closely within a few centimeters, which allows it also to land as you see here on this landing pad. On a day with low winds, it'll be very close to the target. When there's wind gusts anticipated, the full size of the landing pad can still catch the drone if it's blown off course during the landing. The arms seen here corral the drone into the battery swap area. Once in the swap area, other arms change the battery automatically and charge the spent battery. A drone can only fly 15 to 20 minutes max on a battery charge, so in order to avoid a person in the field manually swapping batteries, we need this automatic swap and recharge station. After the battery swapped, a new set of waypoints are loaded onto the drone and it takes off on a new flight plan, again flying low with LiDAR and using AI image recognition to only spray the weeds. It continues to repeat this until it's turned off. The purpose in making this video is to get these ideas out in public in one place. I want to demystify how AI for image classification, precision drone landing, automated battery swaps and recharge and flight plan updates can be done at a very reasonable price. You see, big ag is going in this direction. AI is going to be present in farming, but the prices that you see from those folks are exorbitant. Only the largest farmers are going to be able to handle them. And my point here is, all of this stuff is attainable for a small holding farmer at a reasonable price. And these benefits should be reaching everyone, not just the largest farmers, because there's really nothing magical about it. Anybody can put this together. This whole setup costs less than $2,000 and is built from open source, off-the-shelf components. My thought is that making this stuff publicly available in one place is the fastest way to get these ideas from my brain into the hands of farmers, and that's the biggest benefit to everyone. My hope here is that I can inspire others, think farmers, implement sprayers, engineers, business people, to take these ideas, improve on them, and put something out that any farm of any size can use and get those same benefits that are gonna to come to the largest players. Let's start with an overview of the drone here. This is the drone, it's an S500 kit uh, for the frame, a 920 kV set of motors, 30 amp ESCs, and a 4S LiPo battery down below. That's all very standard for uh, a drone of this size. Now a little bit more interesting are the electronics. This is a cube orange for the autopilot and a HERE 3 GPS, and we've also got uh, a downward facing LiDAR, this is a TF Mini. So together these things help us get precision drone flight. Uh, this actually controls you know, where you're going to fly, this tells you exactly where you are, so it's using RTK base station corrections which gets us within a centimeter or so of where we want to be. And then this downward facing LiDAR is used so that we can stay one or two or three meters precisely off the ground following the terrain as we fly. We also have a 900 megahertz radio right here, and that is used to communicate with the 900 megahertz radio over here, and this is our base station running mission planner, and you can see right up here, Ardu Pilot. Uh, this is how we set where this thing is going to fly, and all the instructions end up on this computer right here so that it flies a, a precise flight pattern there. Now the actual interesting parts that are sort of out of the ordinary here are all in the AI and machine learning. This right here is a little tiny camera. It's facing down. And this over here is a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Together, these things are processing all of the images that appear below this. So it takes a photo and then it uses the, the processor on here uh, to analyze what's going on below the drone. Is it a crop or is it a weed of some sort? Now, when it identifies that it's a weed, it will actually turn on this motor controller back here 
and then turn on this pump right here. So this right here is a tank. The landing gear uh, doubles, it's hollow, and so you can put liquids in here. And this will suck those liquids out and then force them into these little spray nozzles right here. So whenever this thing decides that there is a weed, it will turn on that pump and then turn on those spray nozzles, which will spray whatever is in whatever liquid is in your tank down here out. Also worth mentioning about the tank here, we get refills from our base station. So when we're on the base station, there's actually another tube that'll fit right over here. Refill here, and then if we fill too much, it will actually allow the liquid to pour out right here, which goes right back in through the a hole in the base station uh, where it will be collected in a bucket. So all of our reservoir of whatever liquid we're spraying uh, is both refilled and overflowed right here while this thing is getting a battery swap. So there is, it's completely hands off getting those refills so that it can go out on another flight. So in summary, this is a fairly standard drone. Even these electronics here are not that uncommon. Uh, this is something that you would use any, you know, lots of folks would use Ardu Pilot and Mission Planner to program auto missions or even just to fly a drone by hand, remote control kind of thing. Um, what's really unique and special about this is our Raspberry Pi camera tank and sprayer. And it's fair to think of these as two separate systems. This drone is just a transport system that flies around the field, you know, one or two meters off the ground. And this Raspberry Pi is totally separate. It's just constantly snapping images and whenever it sees a weed, it turns it on. There really is no connection you know, other than getting battery power uh, between those two systems. I created a detailed video with step-by-step -step instructions on the rest of this drone build. So if you want to see that, it's the first link in the description below. Now let's move on to the landing pad. You see this drone can only fly for 15 minutes or so before it needs a new battery. So we've got to land this thing and swap out the battery and of course we want to do that automatically. This is a big landing pad about 8 foot by 8 foot with two big arms on it that corral the drone and pinch it into the battery swap and recharge station that you see here. If you look underneath there it's actually large motors spinning uh, threaded rods that make those things move. Linear actuators push out the old battery and catch it in the tray that you see here, and then the battery charger rises and the arms push in a freshly charged battery. Then the battery charging bay is lowered and the spent battery is pulled into that battery bay and charged there. The batteries and bay on the drone were modified to use this swapping system. The sprayer tank is refilled using the tube that you see here. Finally, the laptop loads a new flight plan onto the drone, pushes it out of the charging area, and it takes off on the next flight. I created a separate video about building the landing pad and battery swap area, and it's the second link in the description below. With the time that's left, I want to cover two topics. First off, Raspberry Pi and custom image classification models. That's something that wasn't covered in the original drone build. There was a, a, an old system that was used for all the, the images there. And then second, some improvements that could be made on this thing. So first off, Raspberry Pi and custom image classification models. Uh, why do we have to do this? There's off-the-shelf models like iNaturalist that identify species, but they don't work very well for a few reasons. First, um, most training photos that they use aren't taking six feet above the ground, you know, looking down at a field. Uh, second, the vi drone vibrates and it blows air all over the plants, causing them to move around in the wind, so when you take the picture, you get moving pictures. It looks like a swirl of, of motion. Again, this doesn't match the training photos, so we have to make our own model. Step one, Send your drone out on missions um, and just take photos. Don't try to spray anything. Then bring the drone back, grab all of those photos off of the SD card, and sort them into folders. You can see the folders here. Um, then you're going to use this script right here to build your models. This is different than the script that was used in previous uh, videos. You're going to um, create a TF light quantized model with class labels. TF Lite runs a lot faster on our Raspberry Pis. So not what we've used before, but that's what you get out of here. You actually get three different versions of it. You can try all three versions of it and see which one you like. Now, once you've got your TF Lite model ready to go, you can use a script like this one so that you can actually uh, run your, run your uh, uh, drone over the field and then see what it would spray. Don't put anything in the sprayer tank yet. Uh, just run the thing out there and have it you know, try to identify the various things that are in your field. So you run it on a different route and see how it does. Now that you've got a model that works, you actually want to start spraying things. Um, a note about Raspberry Pi and the motor controller, the L298N that I used and, and the pump here. Um, there's something funny that happens when you turn on your Raspberry Pi. All the pins float to 3.3 volts. 
uh, this motor controller uses 0 and 5 volts. So 3.3 volts is right in the middle of there. And it will turn on in most cases. The, the, the motor controller will turn on until the Raspberry Pi finishes booting and actually asserts things on the pins. So the way there's a few ways to handle this. But what I did is um, I took in 0 and in 1 and tied them to ground. That turns off the motor on side 1 or side A. And then I only used side B. Um, I took in 3 and I put it to 5 volts and I took in 4 and stuck it to GPIO 3. So what that does, GPIO 3 is going to float high, 3.3 volts, and then in 3 is also at 5 volts and the motor controller treats both of those as high and it turns everything off no matter what's coming on the enable pin. Um, I connected GPIO 2 to the enable pin. Now when the Raspberry Pi finishes booting up, uh, what actually happens is when it wants to turn on a motor, I move that um, GPIO 3 to low, so you've got uh, in three high, in four low on your motor controller, which means it's enabled. And then on the enable pin that's connected to GPI2, we, we start sending uh, a high voltage, 3.3 volts there, and that motor treats it as on now, and it will actually turn on the motor for as long as needed. Uh, here's a little video looking at that, and then there's a, an attached wiring schematic in the, uh, in the um, description below as well. Let's talk improvements to make this thing more commercializable. First, add more battery bays and chargers so that you can keep running all the time because you always have a charged battery. Second, 3D print the battery case so that the battery fits into that little battery case and you can just plug right in with the power and charging. And then that battery case can fit into your battery bay. Third, make the whole drone bigger because it can cover more area, obviously. Fourth. Improve the model so that you have more accurate image recognition. This is just going to take a lot more images and a lot more species of plants so that it can, you know, uh, be more used in more places. And last, put faster motors on the landing pad. This thing's rather slow right now. If you put some better motors on there, you can really suck that drone in fast and swap those batteries out quickly. That's it. It's a long build, I know, but it's a huge opportunity to make cleaner, less expensive food. Big Ag is moving this way. Think John Deere, Carbon Robotics, etc., but their products are very expensive. I hope that I've accomplished one thing with these videos, which is to show that artificial intelligence and robots can be used in agriculture and anybody can jump into the game. What I really hope comes of this is that someone is inspired to take these ideas and make it real. In other words, that these ideas get from my head into the hands of farmers so that we can all be eating cleaner, cheaper food faster. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more unique and useful do-it-yourself builds.